Raise my faith in golden years. Welcome back to the southwest of France as we continue our journey with scenic through breathtaking Bordeaux. After exploring the city, it's now time to discover some of its surrounding towns and villages. These might be the... We are going to eat and shop ourselves silly and just revel in all of the wonderful history and stories that each and every town here has. Beginning right now, right here in saint Emilion. This charming medieval village is just a short drive from the city of Bordeaux. Or for us lucky scenic passengers, a leisurely cruise on the luxurious scenic diamond. This is probably a really good spot to tell you that when you come here, make sure you wear flat shoes. The cobblestones are almost smooth as silk from the amount of tourists they get here, and I suppose the pilgrims as well. How many, how many tourists do you get every year? About between a, uh, one million and two million a year. It doesn't take long to work out just why the tourists flock here. The beauty of the town and its vine-covered surrounds is absolutely intoxicating. And apparently, not a bad spot to bring your better half. Charming and very romantic. Oh, really? <laughs> very romantic. <laughs> How come it's so romantic? It just is. The, peop the way that um, French people are, the, mm. the cute streets and the architecture, it's just charming. Mm. From every single vantage point, the church is the heart of the town, and it remains Europe's largest monolithic church. The church and the town itself was created thanks to a miracle-working monk named Emilion, who lived here way back in the 8th century. I cannot believe that you can come into the actual cave where Emilion lived. This is where he... He came to and he prayed from here? You have to imagine there was nothing. There was just a hole, a cave. And he wanted just to pray and meditate. And he heard water coming out of the ground. And then he thought, God gives me water. Why? It's a sign. So God gave him water to baptize people. And of course, where there are people and pilgrims, there is wine. Oh, yeah. And saint emilion is thought to be the oldest wine-producing appellation in the Bordeaux region. Don't you think it's amazing that they can trace the first vines being planted in this area by the Romans to about 100 years after the birth of Christ, and that it was during the Middle Ages that wine production was at its peak? You have to keep in mind that they couldn't actually trust the water that they were drinking during that time, so they would have wine, albeit a lighter type of wine, for breakfast, lunch and dinner. And today, not much has changed. Of course, they still have here the amazing soil, the climate, the latitude. They do not irrigate and they are completely beholden to the weather gods. saint emilion and its vine-laden surrounds produce over two million cases of wine every single year. And I suppose from where we're walking now, this really allows yeah. us to see the amount of wineries in this relatively small region. Yes, yeah, saint emilion is only 12,500 acres, which is, you would say, a lot, but 900 shed, 900 properties there. 900 different wineries within exactly. that one block. Why from here is it the world's best? We do wines now since 2000 years, you know, so. We got it down pat. <laughs> After the gorgeous wineries of saint emilion we are back to the luxury of our floating hotel. This is the scenic diamond. Like all of scenic spaceships, the Diamond has several separate areas to relax and soak in the surrounds. But when the cabins are this luxurious, I don't know if I, I ever really want to leave. If you really want to treat yourself, why not book the Royal Owner Suite? You can see it has all the bells and whistles. But I love to read the little note from us the list of all the things that your butler can do for you. Of course, you have things like valet service, uh, arranging a cocktail party in here, and the butler will, will serve all of the beverages. But I like the option of, oh, here we go, drawing a bath. I would love to just once in my life ask someone to draw a bath for me. I never would, but I like to have the option. 